lives we can uh, help them uh, achieve. Uh, but some people are qualifying that I might speculate, or others might speculate, uh, might not necessarily qualify for such aid. Additionally, and most compellingly, a person who worked with me this year to study this area found out that the goals, that is, independent living goals, uh, were not being achieved, notwithstanding the fact that New York was spending lots and lots of money toward those goals on these programs, and lots and lots of people were qualifying. So from an outcome analysis, we weren't doing better than anywhere else, but spending a lot more than other places in New York. The point is that control follows, control follows the dollars. And insofar as we have um, more reliance on, on, on national resources, we will have more national control. Now, I, sa I told this to a friend of mine who's very substantially uh, conservative. Uh, person, and I regard myself as a reasonably conservative person too. You probably figured that out already. It didn't even have to announce it. And she said, that's not that bad a thing because we haven't been very good at delivering quality education systematically across New York so that if we have a national standard, maybe we'll do better. That's, so, so I, I, Posit, I, dis, I, I uh, um, stipulate that it's a worthy debate. But my view is that it should be done forthrightly and self-consciously. It shouldn't be done by increments. It shouldn't be done invisibly so that you wake up one morning and every child in the sixth grade on Tuesday, September 26th, across America, is doing, I don't know what people do in the sixth grade. Long division? No. <laughs> uh, Henry Hudson? The same lesson, as is the case in France. You know, it shouldn't be the, or is alleged to be the case in France. Who knows what's going on in France these days? The, 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 uh, it shouldn't be the case that we arrive at this outcome without self-consciously understanding that we are nationalizing our governance system and we are departing from the decentralized model that we have pursued and nurtured and valued for a long, for a long, long uh, uh, time. And that's what I think is the invisible crisis because it's certainly, that is, and the, and, the, and the formulation is that the remedy has the problem embedded in it. The rescue brings the problem. So the rescue is not without consequences and the consequences are structural, operational, and if you value decentralization, if you value community, and if you value uh, community governance, and you value local uh, autonomy, then you should be thinking about this. Now, there is a school of thought in political science that you can take their money. I don't want to offend people. I, have a, I was raised in East Flatbush, and, and uh, I can uh, uh, repair it to rather rough language. There was a guy named Jesse Unruh who was the speaker of the, of the California uh, Assembly, and he said that the mark of being an expected legislative leader was to take their money, uh, drink their whiskey, as you have done, <laughs> sleep with their women, and still vote against them, right? So there's an argument that, uh, and I know that uh, there's a sexist dimension to that, so let's do it. Let's kind of translated both ways. But the fundamental, but, 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 but the, but the fundamental uh, point is that it's not necessarily true that control has to follow the dollars. But my experience suggests to me that there's no such, I was head of the county government in Ulster County, so I have some practical experience in governing, and I have some academic study, and my experience suggests to me that f control will follow. Control will follow. Uh, uh, to the person who provides the resources. You know, when I provided the car keys to my kids, I had rules about when they had to come in, and if they didn't come back in and the tank wasn't full, they didn't get the car after that. You know, so in the immediate sense, you might not, you might retain control, but in the longer term, there will be a consequence. Maybe that metaphor is not compelling, but... So what do we need to do? Well, it seems to me to preserve 
community, uh, community government. To kind of preserve a decentralized system, we have to make it work better. We have to make it more efficient. We have to make it more effective. We have to, make, we have to embrace change to preserve. In other words, change is a conservative strategy when it comes to people who are interested in local autonomy. And this is a heck of a hard message to sell in rural New York. You know, it's hard to tell town supervisors in rural New York and town boards in rural New York uh, in very difficult economic circumstances that they may do better by having one highway department or collaborating and contracting for highway services than they, than they will do by having separate highway departments as they have had since the beginning of time. So we need to seek greater efficiency and effectiveness in local government so that we can maximize our use of resources, so that we can avoid uh, dependency, and so that we can retain uh, community and uh, we can retain community governance, not just community. We will have community, but we can retain community governance. I wrote a book with, uh, that was published in 2001 on regionalism and realism that Lindy helped me uh, with. And uh, my co-author was a guy named Dick Nathan, who's, who the academics in the room might, might know of. And, and uh, we said that there were, in trying to, in trying to think about reform, we, we have to think about some, the, not only the values of efficiency and economy, we also have to think about competitiveness because regions have to keep their costs in check so they're competitive for tax base. And we also have to think of community. In other words, I am not here saying that we have to go to the biggest and best. I know counties are, not, are, are more abundant in Massachusetts, so they're not an option. But I'm not arguing that we need to, re, uh, to uh, regionalize all local government in order to save local government. I'm arguing that in order to preserve community, we have to think of these other values and do what I call right-sizing, figure out what, how to deliver services efficiently and effectively, often collaboratively, often with different models, often in contractual situations with private sector or not-for-profit not providers, uh, and the formulation of, uh, of uh, one economist and political scientist, the people who uh, provide the service don't have to produce the service people who provide the service can acquire its production by somebody else and still satisfy needs and respond to demands and expectations in the local uh, communities. Now, how do we do this? And there are lots of examples, lots of examples about how the states, uh, states can help. And in New York, actually, the state is is helping some, although less than it was before the state got into fiscal trouble. But fundamentally, first, and, and I like to, I was talking to some, guy, some fellow on a radio station here. So I don't know if, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't regard it as, I won't characterize it negatively, but he, he, he told me about his hundred and some, his wife's hundred and some year old uh, grandma. And uh, I said, think about the uh, circumstance of that person when she was born. Now let's take the 102. So let's see, it would be 2010 minus 100, 1910, 1908. Well, the automobile was just coming into uh, use. Roads were not paved. There was no, the, the telephone was in use but not commonly available in people's households. Uh, the assumptions we make about travel, air travel, no air travel, no internet, no uh, um, what can I say?